not live to see the Arapaho. General, more Sioux! the soon know I was here and on my way to see the Arapaho. Maybe somebody told him. he had been the youngest general in the Civil War. Within five years, he had been reduced in rank and sent west to be forgotten. But he was not the kind of man to let the world forget. His name, George Armstrong Custer. Water ahead. See those trees? Nothing closer? There's nothing closer, my colonel. Nothing. What do you think, California? That's what we brought Gruley along for. It's his stomping grounds, not mine. Well, you said it. This is my country. I was very happy here for ten years with the Harpo, my people. You see, I was married to one of these women. And she gave me three beautiful children with beautiful eyes, as beautiful as those of a doe. But there's always war, war between the tribes. And one day they, they came, they came while the men were out hunting the buffalo. And when, when they returned, it was gone. Everything was gone. Now you understand why I ride with the, with the cavalry. So I can teach the Sioux a lesson they'll never forget. I'm sorry, Goulet. You ride back and guide the column up this way. Very well, my colonel. Ah. Lieutenant Moreno? I hope you don't mind me taking the liberty of leading the rescue party out, sir. I don't mind the rescue party, Lieutenant. What I do mind is leaving the camp undefended. What kind of an officer leaves valuable supplies, guns, ammunition defended only by wagon drivers? I thought Colonel Custer was more important, sir. The mission is important, too. That shooting could have been a trap. He's right, Lieutenant. No individual of any rank is more important than the total mission. Remember that. Yes, sir. Obviously, those Sioux knew I was with this column. And what's more important, they knew why. Something even you men weren't supposed to know. I say supposed because I suspect you did. 
I'm afraid it is common talk around the fort, General. And in front of the so-called friendly Indians who hang around the kitchens. Yes, there was a lot of talk, my colonel. Would anyone care to tell me what exactly was said? That you were going to Fort McPherson, sir, to talk peace with the Arapaho chiefs. And did it occur to anyone that there might be a great need for secrecy? The Sioux will lose an important ally if the Arapaho withdraw from this Plains War. What really concerns me is, was this a small isolated effort? Or are the Sioux prepared to try to stop us? I reckon time will tell us that. They're still out, Chunder. Tonight, double the guard. Lieutenant. Sir. This is your first field duty, isn't it? Yes, sir. I only arrived last month from Fort Leavenworth. And six months before that, you were still at West Point. That's right. Where, if I may say so, sir, you were the hero of the whole class. I can't tell you how delighted I am to be in your command. And in this case, Lieutenant Moreno's. Yes, sir. Of course. But I must admit, sir, I find that rather difficult. I mean, he, he's so unlike any officer I've ever known before. In what way? Well, he, he's so unfriendly. Always off by himself. Not at all the man of action I admire, like yourself, sir. I've even wondered how he ever became an officer. I mean, his speech, his looks. Well, sir, he, he seems foreign. Lieutenant, we live in a country made up of many different kinds of people. A man's looks and his speech make no difference if he does his job well. But that's just it, sir. He never does anything by the book. Lieutenant, I'm delighted to have you in my command with your youthful energy and enthusiasm. But a junior officer isn't expected to question the orders of his superiors. He just makes sure he carries them out properly. Yes, sir. anyone see who shot this? No, sir. Must only been one of them. Snuck in past our sentries. How did he get by? Unless someone let him through. Spy among us? Never can tell. A spy? What do you think, Sergeant? Who's to know, sir? Goulet? It is something unpleasant to think about, is it? Not yet, no. But uh, not impossible. But who? One of the troopers? A wagon driver? California Joe? You, Grulet? There's no one left. Except one. Moreno. Something awful strange about him. The way he looks, the way he talks. I'd say he was a Mexican, but he doesn't sound or act like any Mexican I ever knew. And I know plenty. Are you saying he's the spy? Well, he wasn't here this afternoon when the shooting started. He 
said he was out looking for signs. And where is he now? Lieutenant Cox. You're in charge of the guard until midnight. I'd advise you to get out there and check their positions. Yes, sir. Sir, they won't stop at this. It's bound to be another attack. I know. It's likely we're up against a good-sized war party. And if we are, Lieutenant, what do you suggest we do about it? I suggest we ford up and send back for reinforcements. No, I've got to reach McPherson by the 12th. The Arapaho will be there then. If I'm stopped or turned back, you know what that'll mean. This chance for peace will be gone. We're two days from McPherson now, and we've got to push on as fast as we can. Ford up for the night, we move before dawn. Yes, sir. Somebody left the bung out of the water keg. It must have worked itself out. You can't be sure it happened like that. No more than you can be sure it happened any other way. Look, water's precious out here. We may not find any more. Have you got anything else to report, Lieutenant? No, sir. Not since you've been asleep. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Don't you like me? Sir, I don't remember anything in the regulations saying I have to. No, but the regulations do say you must respect my rank. I expect that. Sir, the Sioux penetrated our position. While you were out checking the guard. I don't know how those bucks got through. I'll tell you how. He went and killed this sentry and then snuck in through his post. They must have known where he was all the time. Sir, 
It's beginning to look as if there is a spy here. You think so, Lieutenant? Well, I don't want to make any accusations, sir. But it does seem a bit strange to me that those Sioux came in here quite easily just a few minutes after Lieutenant Moreno went back on guard duty. And just what does that mean, Lieutenant Cox? Sir, do you know he's an Indian? A Kiowa. He's a member of a tribe that's a close ally with those Sioux out there. As you were, Moreno. Lieutenant Cox, now you've just accused me of incompetence. Beg your pardon, sir? It's my business to know the background and record of every officer in my command, and most of my men. Yes, of course, sir. For instance, you were 38th in your class at West Point. That's right, sir. Moreno was fourth in his. You've served less than six months. He served ten years with high competence. You've seen no action. He's been twice decorated for bravery above and beyond the call of duty. The special knowledge his Indian background provides has stood the army in good stead many times and saved army lives. Now, would you like to make specific charges against this officer and cite your evidence? No, sir. Then I order you to make no insinuations. Now prepare to move out. Moonset will be in two hours, and we'll start then. You mean a night march, General? We might be able to get the jump on them and slip away. Lieutenant Moreno, you'll give the orders. Yes, sir. <laughs> They're following, all right. And somebody made it very easy. What do you mean? They left a trail, dropping things. What kind of things? You know, all kinds of things, things we use every day. Like a canteen? That's mine. Move them on. Nice place to rest. All right, we'll rest one hour. Ticket the horses unbitted. Leave them saddled. Yes, sir. See any of them yet? No, but they're out there all right. Yep, more of them all the time. Watching their dust are coming in. I reckon they're just biding their time. For signs, Marino? Or uh, 
Maybe you're making them, huh? Get out of there immediately. You two are asking for a court martial. I was only defending myself, sir. That's true, sir. I struck the first blow. It was my offense. I apologize to the lieutenant. You have your apology, Cox. Now get back to your duties. Yes, sir. We don't have time for private quarrels, Moreno. Yes, sir. Control yourself. Colonel! Colonel Custer! Out there! a skirmish line and hold your fire. Warm a skirmish line! Hold your fire! Prepare for attack! Prepare for attack! The two coming down look like chiefs. Don't look like they're going to attack anyhow. It's crazy horse. They want to parley. I'll ride out and talk to him. That's my job, California. Yeah, you're the one that they're looking for. You make an awful good target out there. Well, come on then. You won, crazy horse. You will go no farther, Custer. Turn back now to Fort Hayes and I will let you go in peace. We're going on to Fort McPherson to meet with the Arapaho. Then you and all your men will die. I don't see how you can stop us. I have many warriors and many more coming. We will soon dance over your scalp, yellow hair. You'll have to take it first. We are many and fierce warriors. We will drive you from the plains. It's only a false dream, Crazy Horse. Give it up before you bring more sorrow to your people. It is your women who will weep. Perhaps. But right now we're going on to Fort McPherson to make peace with the Arapaho. And you're not going to stop us. Person lies that way. We have to circle these hills to get there, right? That's right, my colonel. You know another way? It's awful tough territory. But is there another way? Yes, there is another way, my colonel. It's a very narrow and very difficult trail. With a little bitty pass up on top and no water till you get on the other side. Once on the other side, what's it like? It's downhill and shady all the way. About two hours to McPherson. If we can get through ahead of the Sioux, well, without their knowledge, we should be able to make McPherson before they do. Easy. Then we'll make camp now. Make it look good as if we plan to stay here and defend ourselves. Be ready to move out as soon as it's dark. We'll have to leave the wagons. Can't be helped. All that matters is that we get through and meet with the Arapaho. You're forgetting about one thing, General. What's that? This whole thing depends on us getting through without the Indians finding out about it. You're forgetting about our spy. If there is a spy, they should prove it one way or the other, shouldn't it? The 
wagons are just about unloaded, sir. Do you want to check them? No, I'll take your word for them, Sergeant. Just remember to bury that ammunition. Yes, sir. Are those are settled. The men ready? Yes, sir. All ready. What about these wagons, Sergeant? Well, before we leave, I'll make sure they can't be moved, sir. Fine. We'll move out shortly. Bluff there. It's impossible to pass without being detected. And we'll have to move this way through the marshy ground. It's more difficult on the men, but the horses won't be heard. All right, we'll move the column this way. You and Grulet take the point. California Joe and I will cover the rear. Cox will stay with the middle of the column. Until we reach the high ground. It's Lieutenant Cox. He's out there in the brush, not 50 feet from camp. Have you any idea what he was doing out there? Well, I can tell you that. He figured if we had a spy, he'd try to get word to the Sioux. So when he saw someone sneak out in the dark, he followed him. Well, who was it? Lieutenant Moreno. Cox suspected him, and now it looks like he was right. Leave him alone. Lieutenant Moreno is an officer, and you're guilty of mutiny if you so much as touch him, or if you accuse him of a crime without cause. Well, isn't that cause enough? A dead man? You know as well as I, all of you, that beyond the perimeter of this camp, the dark is swarming with Sioux. You've been warned to stay close to the fires. Cox disobeyed and died for it. There's absolutely no reason to suspect Lieutenant Moreno killed him. But well, what was he doing out there? He was scouting. On my orders. What about me and Gruley? I thought that was supposed to be our job. For this kind of work, Moreno's better than either of you. And he brought back some valuable information. <laughs> you think you can trust that information? Until I see proof of some crime... Lieutenant Moreno is a trusted officer of my command. Now get ready. And when we move out, you'll follow Lieutenant Moreno. Move quietly and carefully. Or we may all share Cox's fate. up as best you can, Sergeant. We haven't got time for a full burial.
safe to mount up now. Pass the word. minutes. Keep the men quiet and no smoking. Yes, sir. Any sign at all? I've seen nothing, Mo Colonel. I'll ride along with you, General. General, I know it's none of my business, and I don't like to say nothing, but, well, I don't like it. I think you're a gambling an awful lot on a uniform. West Point and the old school spirit, huh, California? Well, I'll tell you something. The uniform does mean something to me, and I think to Moreno, too. A man with a record like he has. Well, a man can change if he's got a reason. Have we given him a reason? Well, I don't think we had to give him no reason. I think he was born with one. Then blood's stronger than duty, honor, and friendship. Well, I've always said that blood's thicker than water, and I reckon it's stronger than a uniform. Well, I don't think so, California. Because if that's true, then there won't be an end to this fighting, this war or any other. A man can change, learn, and be something better. Well, now, I ain't no philosopher, but I don't think Marinos are going to change very much. And if he is our spy, why... If he isn't? <laughs> I don't think there's very much doubt about it, do you? I hope you're wrong, California. I hope you're wrong. You think you have to keep watching me every minute, Sergeant? Just in case you need anything, Lieutenant. No, I don't need anything. Go back and see if the cinches are tight for the right of the pass. Yes, sir. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. an excellent job you did leading us this morning. Thank you, sir. And I want to thank you for defending me. Although I think it wasn't me you were defending, only the fact I'm an officer. That's true. The uniform you wear means a great deal to me, and what it stands for. I presume it does to you, too. Why should it? When I first put it on, I thought it would bring me justice, equality, even honor, all those high-sounding words I was told. But it hasn't. It's still the same. I'm still an Indian. A creature not quite human. Well, maybe they're right. Maybe I should go out there and join them. Perhaps theirs is the just cause, after all. Perhaps it is. That's not for us to judge. You don't trust me, either. I don't know you, Moreno. I trust your uniform and the oath you took when you put it on. Remember one thing, Lieutenant. It's men like you who can make the word Indian mean something more than a creature not quite human.
Better wait here for the scouts. Make sure it's clear. Have the men dismount and check their weapons. We may still have a fight up there. Prepare to dismount! Dismount! Well, Marino, here's where we find out for sure. Find out? About our spy. The sewer out there ahead of us, we'll know. There's no sign of pursuit, so it looks as if we got away cleanly. We should be hours ahead of them. Unless our plans leaked out last night when Lieutenant Cox was killed. Seems all clear, my colonel. Did you go through the pass? Yes, I rode all the way through it. I saw nothing, nothing but shadows. All right. Thank you. Good night. You seen Lieutenant Moreno? Yes, I saw him. He was sitting on a rock there, just above the pass. That's Lieutenant Cox's watch. What's it doing to Moreno's saddlebag? Hello! Hello, Custer! You... You... Oh. Sergeant! You're not gonna let him get away with this, are you, Colonel? He's the spy. He'll see us all dead. Hey, General! General! Sue! Hey, General! Sue! Oh, the whole dang pass is full of them. No doubt about it. It's Crazy Horse and his war party. There's no doubt about who's the spy, is there, Colonel? Marino's still an officer. we we'll go back to Fort Hayes to stand trial. If we ever get back to Fort Hayes... Under arrest? Should you be? I killed no one, and I'm not a traitor to my oath. You know how bad it looks. Yes. But I swear to you, I know nothing about that watch. How did it get in your saddlebag? What's that for? I'm gonna tie him up. It won't be necessary. We're all the die here. At least he deserves a chance to defend himself. You know, I don't see how you can trust him. You'll probably wind up shooting us all in the back. California, you know the best way to catch a spy? Give him enough rope to hang himself. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Sergeant, bring the men down here. All right, pull it on the colonel. Pull it! We're in a bad situation. In my dispatch case here is the Arapaho Treaty. 
gonna place it here in plain sight. If something should happen to me and I can't get through, someone must carry out my mission and get it to Fort McPherson. Is that understood? Colonel! Sue, behind us! Dispatch case, it's gone. Grule! Grule! I'm going to check the horses, my colonel. You don't need the dispatch case for that. It wasn't a Sioux. It was Americans who killed my wife. My three little ones. My beautiful Ange. Apology, Lieutenant. You owe me nothing, Sergeant. We'll have time to talk later, if we're lucky. Right now, we've got to find a way to get through that pass. We could make a run for it, but it's going to be mighty rough. We sure can give it a try. Colonel, there may be another way. What's that, Lieutenant? We've been fighting the Sioux like a blue coat, just like they expected. How would you fight them? Like a Kiowa. We fought the Sioux long before the white man set foot on this land. A Kiowa boy usually steals his first horse from the Sioux. All right, Lieutenant. If you were in command of this unit, what orders would you give? I'd order Sergeant Buster to take seven men. Wait for my signal and then make a run for it through the pass. And you and me? We could play a little Kiowa game against the Sioux. They're going to ride out. Oh. They will try and break through the pass. Kitten, when we move out of here, you better be ready to pick them up and lay them down in an awful hurry, kid. You think the colonel made it? Sergeant, them newspaper men back east has been talking about Custer's luck even before the Civil War. Yeah. But your luck's been known to change, California. And when it does, it's bad luck all the way. If I was you, I'd say a little prayer that this ain't the time and the place that it changes. Now, my warriors, get ready. Soon they will come. Forward, at a walk. Ho! Ho! On the skirmish line. Now when we reach 
to pass. Don't stop for anything. That's a colonel's orders. Draw. Saber. Had a walk. Forward. Ho. I'd have had a chance to apologize properly. And to shake his hand, Colonel. There are other Lieutenant Morenos in the world, Sergeant. And they could all use that handshake. It's something you'd all do well to remember. All right, Sergeant. Move him out. Form up into a column of twos. Move out. Well done, Lieutenant. 